Welcome in to Rebound Off the Net. I'm your host, Joshua Cox, and today we have a special guest. We are joined by the defensive backs coach and special teams coordinator of the Orlando Predators, Mr. Kenton Rickerson. Coach, thanks for being with us. Thank you, Josh. Thanks for having me. Uh, first off, Coach, tell us a little bit about how you ended up with the Preds and your relationship with Coach Burt. Okay. Well, we'll start with uh, the, the Coach Burt. Um, we met each other back in 2002 when we were playing in North Carolina um, for the Cape Fear Wildcats. Um, and we've been friends ever since. He was here in Orlando, played in Orlando. Uh, he started coaching, I believe, back in 19, maybe maybe 18, don't quote me on that. But um, I was afforded an opportunity in, in, in 2020 to come on board and, um, and coach when Coach Jeff Higgins was the coach. And um, I, I, I took the op opportunity to do so. And... Um, to reunite with EJ was always was, was always a good thing. I was always thinking about that. So we reunited. He was the DC. I was the defensive back coach, and um, it's just been been good ever since. You know, um, always always been vested in, in in Orlando Predators. I, I I was down here when Jay Gruden was here. He was the coach. I came in to camp and worked out. So I played at UCF. So I. I've always known about Orlando, always cheered them on. I knew some of the older players. They were they were friends of mine. So I always had a special – Orlando Predators always had a special special place with me. So Orlando Predator football since since the uh, 90s. And um, they've, they've always been a fan. Um, I, I knew some guys that played here. Um, I was fortunate enough to play. And um, – it was just when the opportunity came around to coach, I didn't, I didn't want to turn it down. It was, it was exciting. I jumped right on it. So, yeah, you talked about uh, your career there a little bit. Uh, you talked, you got college at UCF and your pro career. You started out a little bit in the outdoor game. Um, tell us a little bit about going from the outdoor game to the indoor game and how that transitioned for you. Um, yeah, I, I started. You know, I had a free agency contract with uh, the Carolina Panthers and. Um, was playing, just trying to, you know, fulfill that dream and get to the NFL and play in a, in a Super Bowl. Um, but unfortunately, it, it didn't work that way, and I got steered over to Arena. Um, but once I got to Arena, it took it took a, it took a, you know, a year or two to, to to learn the game, and it was kind of frustrating in those one or two years when I first started because uh, the game was so different, you know. And I couldn't figure out. I was a pretty good DB outdoors, and I just could not figure out why it wasn't translating to the uh, arena field. But um, this game of ours that we play is 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 different. It's it's very fast. Um, things happen fast. Um, if you're not a fan and if you don't know much about arena, um, four of our fields can fit on a on an outdoor field. So we can fit fit four of our our fields out there. So that just tells you you know, how fast the game is and how things, you know, how this game is really fast compared to outdoors. But once you get, you know, you learn the, the arena football game, once you you play it and you get some repetitions and you learn it, um, if you're a good DB or a good wide receiver, then it'll translate and you'll be a good DB or wide receiver in our game. Jump a little bit. You're a former Predator player, just like Coach Burt. Uh, what does it mean to be able to uh, coach a franchise that you once played for? It's, it's it's exciting, man. You know, every day because you think about some of those players that you played with. You think about some of those players that you you saw playing, the Barry Wagner's, the Kenny McIntyre's. Uh, uh, you think about that, and uh, you think about what you want to get out of your guys, and what, how you want your guys to play the game. You know those those guys that I just mentioned. They're, they're, if there's a Hall of Fame in the arena, they would be in the Hall of Fame. Um, they played the game hard. They played it tough. They 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 were they were good players. And um, when I coach, I think about those guys. I think about the uh, Jake Gruden's. I think about the the the, the old coaches and, and some of the older players. And that's always in the back of my mind because during those days, um, Orlando was 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 the team was the AFL team. I mean, you had you had Orlando, you had uh, you had uh, Tampa Bay, and they were in arena bowls year round. You know, year after year after year, they they were playing for arena championships. And um, we just we're just trying as a coach 
I'm just trying to get back there. I'm just trying to get the Orlando Predator organization back to winning the Arena Cups and get these fans around here excited about, you know, Orlando Predator football. Yeah, the last season or two has been tough for the Preds. Uh, Coach Manuel talked to us about the other day about how Coach Burt wants to, an old pre, who's an old Predators player, wants to bring back the old Preds way and build a winning culture. What do you think needs to happen at your respective positions, the defensive back and special teams, to get back to the Preds winning ways? What are your goals for your position? Well, my goal is just to, to get guys that's, that's invested, that's, that want to be here, that want to be Predators, that want to go out and, 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 and do the extra, to watch the extra tape, to get the extra treatment, to, to do more, you know, just don't do enough. You know, I want guys, I'm, I'm looking for guys that want to do more and that want to, want to, that know about the, 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 Pe the Orlando Predator history and, and some of these older guys and the way they played the game. And I just want to get those, these new guys to understand that and, and, and come in and just battle every day work work in practice uh um so the game day will be easy study prepare for 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 the game you know don't just you know suit up on game day and go out there and expect it to happen because it doesn't happen like that and it's just like i tell my guys last year it's just like a bank account right you want to everybody want to make uh withdrawals right <laughs> You got to deposit something to, to, to make those withdrawals. So depositing happens Monday through Friday, you know, when in practice, like I said, getting treatment, watching the extra film. Uh, it shouldn't be, you know, you're coming into practice just to watch film with Coach Rickerson or Coach EJ. You should be watching film on your own. You should be watching more film than Coach EJ or Coach Rickerson if that's possible because we watch a lot. You should try to watch more than us. You should, you, you should want to be great, and that's the guys that we're looking for. And I think we got a, a good group. Listen, with the guys we got coming in, I'm excited to get start working with them. Yeah, there's a lot of people that listen to this show that are new to the AFL game. Uh, tell people about the difference when it comes to special teams. Can you talk a little bit defensive back, maybe a little bit more in detail of what what those two position groups look like in the AFL, different than they do in outdoor football. Well, in arena football. There's the Ironman rule, and that's second to none in any rule in any other football because you're talking about guys having to play both ways, offense, defense, and then they had to turn around and play special teams as well. So that takes a toll. You know, an outdoor game, you may be, you know, just a DB. In the arena, you may be a DB and a receiver and then have to run down on kickoff or block on kickoff return or, you know, with that being said, it's just, it's more, it's taxing. It's more taxing on you. And in, in an outdoor game where you can play 20, 25, 30 minutes straight in this game may only be seven minutes that, that, that you play eight minutes that we can get that out before we have to give you a rest because of the Ironman rules. Uh, special teams is, like I said, it becomes a challenge because you got these guys where they, they're playing offense, defense, and then they got to, run down on kickoff and you're talking about fourth quarter when you dog tiger um, and then you, you got to cover kickoff and you got a four, three guy back there four two guy back there and you got to run down. It, it, it gets tough. It gets tough. So um, I think we, we look for guys that's one in tip top shape and two, I think they got to have that, that dog mentality where they refuse to lose. Because you figure for an eight minute, nine minute stretch, you're gonna be playing offense and defense. Yeah, you might be a good pass rusher, but can you block? You might be a good receiver, but can you play DB? So with that being said, uh, we look for guys who can who can do more than just one thing. And I tell guys that's this trying out for arena football teams, you need to you need to play more than one position. You just can't come out here and work out as a receiver. Because you might not be just a receiver. You might have to play some DP. And that's where guys get caught up in, you know, when it's time to get cut and make those those tough decisions that we have to make as coaches. We look for guys that can, can, can do more than just one thing or that's good at more than just one thing. He can be a good DB. He can be a solid wide receiver. So we don't have to, to uh, substitute as much because substitutions – in, in our game, substitutions are critical, 
I mean, you can lose ball games based on substitution. So we need guys that we know can play both, and we ain't, we don't have to sub. Yeah, you're a good pass rusher, but if we have to take you out when it comes to offense, then we're we're messing with the substitution, and we only got 20, 21 guys. We only travel twenty one players, so you you can see how. Those um, those substitutions become very critical in, in in third and fourth quarters of ball games that you're playing good teams. So, uh, tell us a little bit about your coaching style, kind of the expectations of your players, and how your coaching style kind of meshes with Coach Burt and the other coaches. Um, I think me and Coach Burt, we our coaching styles are similar. We 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 coach how we play. We're we're all out. Um, my guys that I coach, I coach some pretty good ones. Um, we got Josh Jenkins coming back this year. Um, I think he's one of the best, if not the best, DB in our league. Um, but I may be biased. You know, I coach him. I'm coaching for the last two years. But um, I think my guys understand that I need them to play fast, physical, but yet be smart enough to 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 make those critical adjustments in game that they need to make. So when I when I'm looking for my guys. It's like three qualities. You need to be fast. You need to be physical. You need to be smart. And um, if you if you're those, then I can teach you coverages. I can teach you different things, but I can't teach you to run and make open field tackles. I can't teach you to make plays on balls. That's something that you gotta have already. But um, that, I just look for guys that's that's you know fast, physical, smart, and that's team guys. You know, that's about the team and wants to win. And um, we, we had a pretty good crew of uh, DBs the last few years that I've been here. And I'm looking this year is not going to be any different. I think we got a, a pretty solid group coming in, too. Yeah, talk about the solid group coming in. What, uh, how's your defensive backfield shaping out and also kind of your kicking situation? Tell us a little about the players you've got so far. Uh, we, got, uh, we got a guy like Elam. I know you know that name, Matt Elam, played at Florida. Um, we signed him. I'm excited to, to, to get to work with him. Josh, like I said, Josh Jenkins coming back. we got some young guys, um, Amney, young guys that, that, that's been around the program and, um, are looking to get, you know, more playing time this year, but we got, we got some solid guys that, 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 that plays hard. They're big, fast, strong DBs. And, um, we're just looking to add on to some other guys, some new guys we got from the XFL, and I'm looking to um, I'm looking forward to seeing what they got. Like I said, the game doesn't always translate from outdoor to indoor, not right away. And other times, uh, it translates really fast. So it just depends on the player. So we got a bunch of good ones. I'm looking forward to to the Amni. I'm looking forward to 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 uh, Cooks, um, Elam. Like I said. Uh, it's, it's a slew of guys we got coming in that, that I'm looking forward to see play. But like I said, you only got three weeks of camp. So um, we brought a lot of DBs in. So hopefully everybody comes in and camp and ready, ready to compete. Yeah. Uh, what are you most excited about as you look forward to this revamped AFL? Just the, the direction it, it's going, it's going to be going, you know, um, right now, I think I, I'm more excited about, um, the games being aired, you know, so, so, so our product can get out to more fans without them having to come. We can reach more fans, uh, um, without them having to come see the game. They can sit in their, their, their living room and, and get a taste of it. Uh, I, I definitely think the NFL network airing the games is a plus, uh, maybe we get some of those fans, those fans and their fan base over, you know, we play, you know, the time period that we, that we, we play, there's nothing really, you know, as far as football on. So we're fortunate in that, that aspect to just to be the only outlet for football at that time. So I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about uh, our game getting out to more people, you know, and, a, and a, I, I pray that we, we, we get, we reach a different fan base. We reach those younger, younger people that doesn't know about arena football or, or, you know, and we reach those and they get excited about it and, and they start tuning in. And then our, you know, guys like the, 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 the Darius princes of the world, they, they, they get out there to become, you know, fan favorites. Uh, we got guys like, uh, Freddie Booth, uh, um, 
it's a it's a slew of guys in this league that 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 can play football and that, that need that fan base and they can become household names, you know. And I believe, you know, the, the thing that I'm most excited about is the NFL Network airing these games. Y'all are playing a lot of the historical AFL teams. Uh, what are your thoughts on the schedule and how uh, the re- revamped AFL is shaped up? Uh, I got. I think we spoke earlier. I think uh, you know, um, along with the 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 Orlando Predators, the, the the historic teams, the the Albany Firecats, along with with those, I think you got a new bunch of, uh, of teams from the IFL that's coming over and the NAL, and I think that uh, it's good. It, it just it broadens our, our horizon. It makes you know. We we go from only having we played in NAL last year from only having like eight teams six to eight teams to about twenty teams now so you know, you know the market opens up now to 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 where we can go out to L A we can go out to New Orleans and take our brand of football all over the country and uh, we can reach those 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 states that that doesn't have any pro pro f- football and you know out in the Midwest and you know. We can go out there and, and and get that get those fans along and on on board with uh, arena football, AFL. Uh, last question for you, Coach. Uh, what motivates you to coach this game, and what impact do you want to leave on your players? I I, I just love the game. I think um, that's it. I just love football, and, and more importantly, in specific, I love arena football. You know, like we were talking about earlier, I've been around this game since the 90s. Um, I've been either playing or or coaching this game, and um, it's a beautiful game. I think it's more exciting than than people know, you know. I think, you know, it's a fan-driven league. I think we, our fans, they get up and personal with our players. They can reach out and touch them. They can talk to them. They can, you know, I think it's a special, special, special kind of football. And it, that's made me fall in love with arena football and um, what I expect uh, from, you know, my players is to give it all out. I'm a, I'm an effort guy. I'm an effort coach. You know, you don't have to be the fastest. You don't have to be the biggest. You don't have to be the strongest, but you can control the effort and what you you put out in practice in the games. And um, that's all I expect my players to to go out and play with maximum effort, maximum effort. They prepare during the week, and then once the lights come on and um, the game starts, I want to see effort, and not just you know on the play you're going to get the ball, or you know I want to see effort on those special teams. That's why I'm a special teams coordinator because when I played special teams was, was, I think it's a big part of the game. I mean, it's three parts of the game, offense, defense, and special teams. And I think the teams in this league that win, you know, a lot of games, they dominate on on, on special teams. And um, we're going to do that this year. We're going to put guys on the field that, that, that gives max maximum effort and, and it goes all out and, that just plays the game with passion. So, you know, our brand of football this year is you'll see guys passionate about playing football because our coaches are. We got we got good coaches. We got solid coaches. Coaches that have been around this league, this game for twenty plus years, um, and they're good guys. They're good guys, and they they they, they want the best from for their players. But we also, you know, we want we want to win, and we're going to do everything we can to win. We're going to put a a good product. I think our fans deserve that. Uh, we're going to put a good product out there on the field, and we want to win every game. We want to win every game, starting with Albany. Absolutely. Thank, thanks, Coach, for your time. We appreciate it. We look forward to that opener against Albany. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch. I appreciate you, Josh, for having me, man.